Hi, I'm Lawson and I'm here with Jason and we are here to show you some of the finer points of Dash Design 2. We've recently updated the Dash Design 2.1, so we've uh, made some improvements to the major overhaul to our Dash Design software, making it even easier for you to use. Uh, we're going to break down some of the basics and then we'll get in a little bit deeper topics on some of the specifics. Uh, stay tuned so we can show you some of the great features you can get in Dash Design. Good, and then you can cut in like music thing, yeah. whatever, and then off we go, right? Hey, Jay. Hey, Lawson. Show me what's new. All right, let's do it. All right, so I think the first thing we want to go through is our screens to actually before I even go there, I want to show you a cool new feature that we just added. Nice. Uh, so you'll notice compared to the first Dash Design 2.0, we used to have the tabs going tabs across, going the, across top. the top. Yeah. They're on the side now. Yes. Why did we do that? I know. So why. that we have additional room on the screen and we have room to grow this way now. Exactly. Instead of this way. Brilliant. Yeah, the little tabs, uh, it's kind of like putting favorites at the top of your browser bar, right? Eventually yeah. you run out of room. Yes, and in addition, we used to... Uh, it's good thinking. Yeah, now we've got, uh, if you hover over this, this will actually display the name next to it too. Very nice. So we can either uh, have this disappear on us, mm -hmm. we can lock it out this way, and you'll notice the screen shifted all the way over yeah, so also, that it doesn't... Uh, yeah, it adjusts everything so uh -huh. you have good aspect ratio and... Nothing kind of gets in the way of itself. Exactly. Right? Um, let's go through our screens tabs. The first tab on the top. Okay. Now I've got a I've got a pre <clears throat> I've got a layout that is included with the software when you download. I've got this open. This is one of our pre configured layouts that we provide with the software. Got it. Now do you have to access that? Like when you open up the software, where do you find these? Or does it open up in default to so, uh, whatever, the last one you had? It will open, open the software. Yep, first time you open the software, it's going to be blank. Okay. So you want to go in and open. And uh, I'm already in the AM Infinity folder. Okay. But we can navigate our way up. Let's go to the, the home folder for Dash Design. Okay. Maybe I can display firmware, graphics, instructions, OBD2, and setups. Mm -hmm. So we want to go in setups. We have application specific for certain things like the Infinity or other um, other manufacturers that we've validated and created specific layouts for. Over 250 tested in house. By me. All by Jason. All by me. Yeah. Thank, One at a time. Thank him for having it and email him if you messed it up. Yep. At L M O L L. <laughs> That's okay. I'll just forward it to him. Okay. So I went into app specific AM Infinity. And I selected just a random uh, layout file. We have a ton in here, um, not just for Infinity, but for other apps. Uh, and so. you can see that all in the file name, which is nice. Makes yep. it oh, easy to find. Another cool thing. Mm -hmm. Watch this. I click on this, and I get a preview of what that looks like here. Oh, very cool. So that I don't have to kind of guess at what's there. So that would be our five gauge layout on an Infinity. Yep. And now that we have one another one, a white Infinity white GPS. Using Infinity. So then go to one of our competitors' ones. Go to like sure. a Holly or a Hall Tech or. There we go. So it's a Holly Sniper, which we yep. actually have a new plug and play adapter cable for. 25 channels that thing transmits, I think, right? I want to say about 25? Yeah, I'll go with that. Yeah. Sounds about right. Okay. Um, sometimes when you have a lot of files in here or a really slow computer. It takes a second for it the preview to come up. It takes a second for the preview to come up. It's a good thing this isn't your work work computer. I uh, know, right? <laughs> well, you can see in there we have Holly, Hondata, Link, Mega Squirt, yep. Mephi. Uh, most of uh, most everything that we validated, you're going to find a basic l a layout or template Oof. series in there with the channel. Can show a cool one like the Can Am. Can Am's cool. There we go. This is a brand new release, plug and play. Uh, with some really neat looking screens. And what we'll get to in a minute is you can actually take some of these screens from these layouts, save them as screens, and just make a few adjustments and use them in whatever application you want if you if you like them. Sure, and I'm actually going to go into the Can-Am layout because I like this layout. It's a cool layout. It's a really cool layout. Yeah. Um, so our Screens tab shows all the screens that we have configured in our layouts. Mm -hmm. 
So screen one, two, three, four, alarm screen. Our on change screen, which shows, uh, you can program to show uh, <clears throat> when anything changes really. You, yeah. can, you can define whatever you want to show. So if you, know, if you have different um, the analogy, mode switch. Yeah, perfect. The analogies I like to say are mode switch. If you yep. have, uh, if you're a drag car guy, and you have different uh, boost level settings or launch track, wow. you know, traction or launch settings based on the conditions at the track, so that you don't have to go in there and make those adjustments from pass to pass. You can put multiple maps into the standalone ECU, assuming that it has that capability, and then tie that to uh, like a trim position switch. And when you make that switch, you can trigger the on change screen on your CD Carbon dash. That'll tell you whatever you put on that page. So it can tell you, you know, I'm at position one through what is 12. ours? 12. We uh -huh. have a 12 position trim pot. So you can go, I'm at, you know, position one, two, three, four, five. You can say what the boost level is, what the ignition timing, whatever you want on there, you can do. Yep. For the road race guy, um, it's really cool. We have predictive lap timing on here and it saves your laps and you can also compare your, you know, your current lap time to saving like your fastest or your slowest time. Uh, but what's really neat is if you want to maximize your real estate on the screen while you're driving, but you want a glimpse of that, you can set this to trigger at say the start stop line. So every time you finish a lap, the on change screen will come up. It can tell you what your fastest time was, what your slowest and what your what your current lap time was. Mm -hmm. and then maybe all you do is leave your gain on your main screen so you can see sort of how you're tracking uh, based on your previous lap. Sure. Yep. Did that I cover actually, that? That was actually pretty good. Thanks. Pretty good for a marketing guy. Yeah, hey, I appreciate that. Yeah. Yep. On change. Uh, the other pertinent information here is our tags. So as you can see, we have nothing tagged on these screens. Mm -hmm. But what's neat about the tags Let's say I click into the screen. Oh yeah, and if you want to go, if you want to see a screen, just double click on it. it. Takes you right there. Super nice. Yep. How do you go back? I How do I go back? Part. Screens. Just screens. Okay. Yep. Over here we have uh, the tags. Mm -hmm. So we click the three dots. I go in here. You can see I have nothing populated here, um, but I can add a tag. And because this is an alarm screen, I'm just going to call it alarm. Very nice. You start to tag all of your various alarm screens. Now you looking for one. Mm -hmm. You can search. Yeah, you tag. can enter whatever you want in tags. So Color, hashtag feeling cute. Yeah. I so here you wanna yeah. you wanna tag this one yeah. feeling cute. We can yeah. we can tag it feeling cute. Right. There. Yeah. All right. So what all else right. do we need to know about our screens? Uh, that more or less covers the screens tab. Mm -hmm. uh, one other thing I want to kind of make note of is uh, we've kind of we've moved where you select uh, what. Uh, you want to trigger your alarm page. Mm -hmm. Instead of that being in the obscure setup drop down menu, it's actually here on the alarms. Then all you have to do is just tick the box, and that's going to trigger your alarm screen for you. If we don't have something on this alarm triggers mm -hmm. uh, yep. in the alarm screen page, how do we add it? Is that something we can talk about now? Or? Yeah. No, actually, this is a perfect time to talk about it. Good. So we can go over to our alarms tab here, and this lists all of our alarms that have uh, either been set up in the layout file that we've provided mm -hmm. or something you want to add uh, additionally. Okay. So to add something, I just hit the little plus mark here. I can name my alarm uh, Lawson Happy Feely, something like that. Happy feelings. How about that? Happy feelings. Happy feelings. I always have happy feelings. So when when you, when, you, when would you have happy feelings when driving a car? So your engine speed uh, is over. Let's say engine speed over 120. 120. That's it. Well, what about like 5,000. Okay, 5,000. And then sure. your throttle position. So we also have logic here. Uh -huh. Because and or nor. Um, okay. Cool. So. So and then we Limit want five thousand and throttle position hundred percent equal to a hundred percent to yes. Okay. So okay. Lawson will have happy feelings mm -hmm. when his engine speed is over five thousand and his throttle is equal to a hundred percent. Realistically, anytime you hit triple digits, you really can't not be happy. Sure. Yeah. The same way you know you you carve that perfect apex. So maybe we should do happy feelings G load. 
No, let's not get it. Let's not. Okay, all right, all right. We'll do that another okay. time. We'll set so, it up in the car. So we have to, we also have two <laughs> two ways of uh, triggering the LED lights on the sides of the dash. Mm-hmm. Both five and the seven have them. Yeah. Um, uh, left yellow, right red. You can do this one of two ways. You can select down here when you're actually in the alarm channel. So this just enabled the right. You can also see here. It's also clicked here, and I can do the same thing here. I want. Okay. So you set your up right and left LEDs there. You yep. put them into the menu and then assign them to your alarm page, whichever ones you want or don't want. The easy way to add them is if they're already pre-configured, but if mm -hmm. they aren't pre-configured, you can create your own channel right on the alarms page using yep. the logic uh, and using your channel list with a little bit of basic logic that you guys have programmed into it. Yep. Save it to that list. Yep. Bam. Shows up on your drop down. Correct. Very clean. So now lost in hey, happy, happy feelings. There's <laughs> my happy feelings. It's right there. Now that's going to trigger the alarm oh, page. You make me so happy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what else? All right. Um, I guess we can talk about um, where all the data comes from. That's a really it's good Not topic. from storks. No? No. No? Um, it's not from millions of wires crisscrossing throughout your vehicle? No, just two, actually. Just two wires? Two. I love that. So... Here's our, our CAN tab. Mm -hmm. um, you'll notice we have two different ports, port one and two. Um, we're only using port two on this uh, specific CAN-AM layout, so port one is not populated. Port one, a, we call AMNet on our yeah. harnessing. Port two, we call CAN2. Yep. Um, we can configure our baud rate here, which is the data rate at which the uh, can is being broadcast right and then ours is always probably set to default for us i'm assuming like on port one it's set mm, to our no, baud rate not or necessarily. no i think we defaulted to one meg oh and we typically transmit a 500 right am net all am net is 500 it's 500 yep yeah. but okay. also remember that the baud rate is not dash dependent it's device dependent mm -hmm. so the baud rate is going to depend on what device the dash is receiving the data from yeah um so and that varies all over the map there's no set baud rate that anybody uses. Um, the easiest way to figure that out is to research the device that you're adding to your CD dash if it's not an AEM device. Or if it's a supported app that we validated, if you look at the instructions or the uh, data sheet that we provide with we provide the DBC, yeah. available on our forum. Yes, amelectronics.com slash Form. Sorry. Yep, no, that's fine. <laughs> we provide documentation that spells out all the CAN channels in the DBC file as well as what baud rate you need to set um, set this at as well as whether you need a terminating resistor or not. Mm, very important because... Uh, this is also bus dependent, so yeah. if you're just connecting yeah. between the two devices exclusively, you're going to need a term on both ends of each device. Yes, so if you're terminating something that doesn't have a terminating resistor, you're not going to be able to receive that CAN data. Uh, your choice is to then either physically wire in a terminating resistor, or if the device has a switchable terminating resistor, make sure that that resistor is turned on. Correct. And we have MoTeC M800 support. This is only used when you're connecting to an M800? Yes, because it's special and needs its own support. Yep. Uh, we're going to gloss over this. This is some high-level stuff that uh, most people aren't going to use. All right, so why don't we get into that stuff in another video? Um, but I'm dying to know because I'm curious. What is it? Yeah, sure. We have this cool little feature called Tool Tips. Oh. So if there's something you do have a question about, if you hover over... Do tell. Look it at that. It pops up a little window that says exactly what this is. And then we have the option to show CAN IDs and hexadecimal. We do everything in hex. Yeah. It's pretty common practice in, in CAN programming. But in the unlikely uh, event, you mm -hmm. get something in DES. You have the option to display it. You have the option it. to display it. Okay. Yep. And now, um, let's get to the part where we bring in a DVC file. Yes. So we're going to click import. This is going to open this little 
window up. This is really important step because you can have the best looking designs. You can use our layouts, our templates. The you can create your own layouts by basically pulling screens out of different ones and combining them all together. But at the end of the day, the dash has to know what kind of data it's receiving. So this is really important. So you can see we have a pretty comprehensive list of different devices. Yes, as we discussed, we yeah. have uh, all of our CAN-based devices that will transmit as well as uh, literally hundreds um, of non-AEM ECUs, loggers, and other types of devices like CAN converter modules, widebands that transmit in CAN, uh, temperature modules that transmit in CAN, uh, ride height sensors, shock position sensors, all kinds of different stuff. Mm -hmm. And you can find all that stuff of what we've already validated and hardware validated on our website, either on the CD pages or uh, a great place to look is in our forum at aemelectronics.com slash forum. Okay, moving along. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to pick a, a fairly simple file yeah. here. So let's say we've got our Can-Am and we want to add a, maybe an oil pressure, an oil temperature, a fuel pressure sensor. And... What would a great device be to do that with? The six-channel CAN sensor module. Brilliant. Uh, six-channel CAN sensor module is an awesome little device. Super affordable, two additional pressures, two additional temps mm. if you don't have fuel Not level. just pressures, analogs. Oh, yeah. So you analogs. could add shock pots, whatever. Anything yeah. that's a zero to five signal. Any zero to five, you have two of those, and you have two temps. Yep. And you can also add fuel level. It's a really easy path for adding fuel level if that doesn't come through the CAN bus of a standalone ECU or other type of standalone device you're using, uh, as well as RPM. If you're having trouble finding a good RPM pickup, this is a super easy way uh, to connect and get RPM on your screens. Okay, so let's go ahead and open it up. All right. I'm going to click open. And what this does, this shows us the channels that are, uh, we have our message ID, mm -hmm. and each message has its own individual ID so that the device knows that this message is being broadcast, has this information in it, I know what to do with it. That's more or less what uh, the message ID means. Um, and down here we can see each individual uh, message which within each id okay you're so, you're con you're confusing me show me where i can see the channels okay <laughs> so well what channels do you want to see i want to see them all so what do you okay, what will it right. transmit all right so we have our uh, analog resistance one okay analog resistance two which is our temps mm -hmm. we have our volts three volts four which are two zero to five inputs mm -hmm. we have our this will Okay, so, it, so right bolts. now it's displaying everything. Yep. And if we want to not bring let's say them we in, don't. Let's say we have TACO, taco already. already. We don't need TACO. Perfect. We can deselect that. Okay. And we hit OK, and it brings it in. This is all set up, including the units on the end. So this auto defines units so that, segue, if mm -hmm. we go into our global units preferences, Mm -hmm. we can, this will apply to these channels with the appropriate units assigned and we don't have to even think about it. Awesome. So if we're going Celsius to Fahrenheit, right. it auto does it, we don't have to worry about yeah, it. Yeah, so we don't have to overthink the base units yep. that have been programmed in there and yep. as long as you've set up your unit preferences, mm -hmm. which are global across all of your screens, they'll come in correctly. You want Fahrenheit, you get Fahrenheit, you want... Uh, Celsius, you get Celsius, and so on and so forth with mile per hour, KPH, uh, mm -hmm. you know, boost in PSI or bar or KPA, however yeah. you want to see it once you've set those preferences, global unit preferences will adjust them for all of your layouts. Yep, and then uh, one last thing, mm -hmm. if you're kind of a graphical type person, yes. you're a visual person, yeah. the clicking on any of these will show uh, your message Okay. As a whole, visually. Okay. Uh, you kind of got to know what that means. Yeah, you got to know what you're looking at. Okay. Um, but know, it's you pretty. Have various bites and bits, and yeah. then the Indianness of the uh, message. Okay. Uh, it's very pretty. Uh, yeah, yeah, we're not going to get into that because yep. that's a whole other topic for discussion. But it looks really cool. Yep. Yeah. Um, and I so now, now we've got seen. our uh, our channels mm -hmm. 
our, I'm sorry, we have our CAN messages. Yes. You go into our channels, this is going to populate based on our CAN messages. Okay, so we know how to open up our layout, we know how to add a layout or add screens to yep. create our layout. Yep. We've imported our CAN. Yep. Um, we have uh, got, we so we know what channels we're getting, now mm -hmm. we're going to the channels that have been imported. Yep. And we're going to select what we want to use. Yep. So they're just, they're listed here. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, the six channel that we added, we have analog resistance only. Mm -hmm. We don't have something for, let's say, a uh, temperature sensor, right? So we want to add a channel, and we call this channel coolant temp, if I could spell. I need that sixth grade reading level comprehension. Mm -hmm. um, and then we can select our display units of temperature. Fahrenheit, select our output units of temperature, Fahrenheit. So by what doing this... What if you this, accidentally put in Celsius there, but your global unit preferences are in Fahrenheit? Well, if you select your in output units, and this is uh, uh, over selected as override, uh -huh. it will leave it as Celsius. Uh -huh. But if you select match preferences, it will change it to Fahrenheit. So now you have it set at match preferences, so yep. you really can't screw it up at that point. No. Okay. And what's also neat, let's say we're using an AEM uh, coolant temp sensor. Mm -hmm. We can click on our sensor library, and we have our AEM uh, fluid 8th inch Deutsch 22K, two, uh, 22K pull up, right. which uh, that's based on what it's Don't plugged into. It. Just, yep. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. It's That's done. It. It's done? set. It's calibrated. Love that. And we can go into our back into our screens and add it if we like. Awesome. So we've done that for our pretty much all of our sensors. Mm -hmm. Are we going to be adding some common non AEM sensors to that library? Sure. Over time? Yeah. There's 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 actually plenty of non AEM uh, in look at here that. already. We got generic pressure sensors. We got some stuff from GM, GM Omnipower, Power, PLX. Nice. Um, Ballinger. Okay, so, so we're going to continue to update this, and if there's a sensor that uh, you use a lot when you're building your layouts and it's not in the sensor library, shoot us an email at L M O L. Um, okay, so uh, we've talked about our channels. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk about the images uh, that are used in our layouts okay. and where we find those mm -hmm. and how we can import them. Uh, if we go to our images tab, which used to be the graphics, graphics. yeah, yes which we still have labeled graphic here, well, well, just so you are yeah. feel comfortable. Right. But you're um, in the Images tab. Yep, we're in the so Images tab. you can tab. import the graphic into your Images and tab. And this will show you every single image that you have used in your layout, and even the unused ones. And let's say uh, we don't know what we're using, we don't know what we're not using. Why don't we get rid of what we're not using? There we go. Done. It seems like maybe one got deleted. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, Let's say you've got a buddy's layout. You really like his background, mm -hmm. and he sends it to you. But you don't need all the other stuff. You just want his background. Right. So you come into your Images tab, and you say, that's a cool background. I want okay. that. And that'll be in your Images tab. It's mm -hmm. in the folder, and then poof, it opens up, and it opens up all of your images. So yep. we're making that assumption right now that this is something that's been added to the folder and is now available in your Images tab that you're looking at that we haven't deleted because we haven't deleted the unused images. We got a killer background. We want to use your buddy sent you. Yep. So now I can export it, and I can save this, and that's it. So now it's in my library. Done. Done. That's pretty now easy. Now I can import that to any other layout that I'm building. Okay. Cool. So you can close this out. Open up uh -huh. uh, the white layout that we were looking mm -hmm. at, the white generic layout. And you say, yep. you know what? Yeah, I like the white layout stuff, but I'd really like maybe this screen to sure. be my second screen mm -hmm. if I want to have a dark dark view. Yep. You can import that in. Correct. And that's pretty awesome. Yeah, so you okay. get a good starting point. Yeah, very good. Um, okay, so let's kind of go into uh, a screen and how all the different uh, functions that we have on screens. Okay. So let's actually use this one. This one has a lot of um, a lot of different features in it that we can kind of talk about. Mm -hmm. That's already been set up. Um, so, for instance, we have. Um, a, a value gauge, which is a, a number, um, a changing number. Mm -hmm. So we can assign things, these to things like engine speed, oil pressure, 
values that are going to be changing constantly um, that aren't going to be fixed. We're using that here as mile per hour. We have a needle gauge as well. And these, you can move throughout the screen. You can change the length of the needle, the start stop degrees, the beginning and ending values. And this is all done using your appearance stuff on the right as well as your XY axis and offsets. So everything, basically all that menu stuff you see on the right is going to allow you to change the look, the feel, and the position yep. of that needle. Yeah, and actually if I want to change change things, I need to make sure that my layout Unlock is unlocked. the layout. Yeah, we do that intentionally because a lot of times you can be clicking around you don't really want to make any changes. So we allow you to lock the layout. That way when it's time to do work and you want to make the real changes, you can unlock it. You can also revert. Um, yep, by or, control Z. So exactly. let's let's say I accidentally move that. Whoops. Control Easy. Z, right. it's back. It's back where it belongs. Yep. Okay. And then if I really don't want to move it, I can lock the layout again. Mm -hmm. And then I cannot physically move this. Yeah. That's right. Now you get the Adobe PDF style. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And then we have things like our value text, mm -hmm. which we use for warning labels and, and, and warning text. Um, so what this does, this will hide until it's triggered. Triggered. Yep. Which we went through in our alarms and tab. In the alarms tab, you mm -hmm. can set your warnings, you can set your dedicated yep. alarm page. Yep. Values. And we actually have a warning message um, yeah. tab as well, which is the same process as our alarms. Um, for configuring, you just uh, you would select what input triggers it, which um, is actually based on an alarm channel. Mm -hmm. So you would set up your warnings in your alarm channel, then use these as inputs. So let's go back to the screen real quick. Yep. And the one we're working on. Okay, and we're in our, and so now we go to warning message here. Yep. And do what? So this is set as our warning message. Right. To go see what our warning message. Capable of displaying. Capable of displaying. We That's our warning where we go messages. Back to warning messages. And all of these different conditions, mm -hmm. which are configured in our alarms tab, mm -hmm. can trigger the warning message. Right. You can define what you want this. Yeah, whatever you want it to say. What I want to know is how do you get the stuff on that list into your warning message screen so that when it's a warning, it shows up on your ah, dash. Easy. Okay, that's, we'll, show we'll, us that. We'll that's do, meat and potatoes. Okay, all right, let's, uh, let's find our value text. Nope, nope. Hang Again, on we just second. switched all this up. Be patient with us. A couple more of these videos, and he'll be scrolling through go. it like nothing. Drop this in. I can move it around wherever I want. I can also use the arrow keys to move it around. We There's get it. It's configurable. Yep. <laughs> all right. <laughs> All right, guy. So now I just come down here. I hit the three dots. Okay. I come down and I select warning message. Got it. Now I can change my fonts, all that stuff, the justification, uh -huh. whether I want it centered left, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Perfect. Yep. Easy. Yep. Thank you. And uh, we went through our needle gauges and our text gauge. Um, we have a couple different bar gauges, which uh, we can show here. So this would be a bar gauge. Mm -hmm. This one's actually split up into three, three pieces. Three bar gauges because of its radius and its length. Yep. Okay. Uh, but these are very simple to configure. Yeah. You can change your appearance. You change the start. I want to preview 2,000 RPM. Very cool. I can type that in and I can see it. Yeah. Um, I'm assuming 8, 9 is because we got a color change there when we're hitting red line. Sure. Yes. Let's see. Let's preview. 8,500. 8, Yep. Yeah. Okay. So we're going blue, 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 blue. We hit. We we start creeping on red line. We add that additional box to red. Yeah. Right. And of course, the first arc we have for red will fill design, by before fills. it gets to here. And this will look seamless when it's done. It's yeah. just we're showing preview values right now, so yeah, things are a little wonky. But and these those will stay. Not really. Actually, wanna... I mean, I think that's a great visual of how it looks in the software. Yeah. Just in giving you the ability to test your channels, test mm -hmm. its range, make sure everything's mm -hmm. flowing congruently, and then eventually spit it into the simulator to take a look at it before you upload it to your dash. Yep. Okay. And we also have our vertical and horizontal gauges, um, which that's basically what this is. Yeah. Um, and we can have the same thing, just <laughs> rotated 90 that's degrees. That's horizontal. It is ours. Very good. <laughs> What's this one? The arc. Is that vertical? It's or a, is that a special one? It's a radius. Radius. Okay. Yeah, ah, there we go. Radius. We call it a horizontal tachometer, but it's... Okay. 
Yeah. Yeah. So you can see it here. All right. There we go. This looks a little different than this because there's some configuration you need to do. You smooth the edges. You can get rid of the separators. I'm actually glad you're going through this because it's going to show people how to configure it the way they want. Again, yep. all the tools are going to be on the right-hand side depending on what section you're in. So yep. just like like most of us, I know I kind of try to break it and play around and press it and see what happens. But um, hopefully these videos will help bring you along a little bit more quickly and give you ideas of where to navigate so that you can start playing with your software and really coming up with something cool and custom. Yeah, and then the last one that we want to talk about is our image uh, selectors, mm -hmm. image gauge. So, for instance, a good uh, a good uh, example of this would be either this four wheel four wheel drive state mm -hmm. graphic, or uh, what's really common on a lot of our layouts is the GPS. GPS, ballot. because we sell so many of these with GPS. Uh -huh. yes. So, for instance, this one, if we want to preview, a zero value means that the GPS is not valid, yeah. but a value of one means the GPS is valid, we can see it changes from green to red. Green to red so right. that's more or less what we're going to use our image um, okay. uh, image gauge for, is for <clears throat> you know changing the color of something. Uh, you know. okay. Same kind of thing for the four-wheel drive smart lock. I don't know yep. whether this vehicle has full-time four-wheel drive or variable. It does. Or um, let's see. Two. Uh, th this is this state is dependent on what Something, our channel looks uh, like. It's probably if it's gear, right? So four wheel drive state graphic two. So we need to input five or ten to preview. Ah, so you see okay. here a channel because value. Because variables be, be some beyond just on off. Yes. So it's not going to be true false. This is variable based on three different this modes is, of yeah, drive, which is two wheel probably, part wheel four, and there. full so time. So five four. now shows it as right. being. Uh, Okay, active. So this is actually dependent on the, the data yeah. coming in. Pretty flexible. It is. I mean, a little bit of sorting, but really uh, everything you need here for whatever you're, you're working on. Yep. And then I think the last thing we need to go through, uh, actually two more things. All right. We better get you. to step in. All right. We're going to go through, we're going to go through setup real fast, which just, you know, you, this, here's where you set your shift lights. Okay. Uh, you can configure them by typing them in. So I want this to come on at 5 RPM. Sure. My middle one will come on at five. So before, yep. weren't these incremental and sort of fixed? And yes. you didn't have a lot of flexibility. Like yes. you started here and you ended here and interpolated in between yes. based on a certain amount of increments. Correct. Which doesn't give you a lot of flexibility. So now you've got some really cool feature set here to be able to really manipulate your, your LED shift lights mm -hmm. to make it do what you really want them to do. Yes. That's cool. Yep. Okay. And then we have our speed input odometer setup. Mm -hmm. These are typically preset. We don't have to worry about this. All right. Lap timing, whether we want GPS or beacon mode. Okay. Um, Let's explain that real quick. Yep. So GPS uses GPS coordinates and the uh, beacon button wire, or the beacon wire that mm -hmm. we provide on our harnesses. Mm -hmm. Um, when you press that to ground, that sets a GPS waypoint, and that becomes your start-finish line. Okay. So um, if you need to track map, um, you're probably going to want to use that output on the harness. You're going to want to wire a button to it so that as you cross the start-stop, you press that button. When you take off, do your lap and come back in, the software will automatically record that and map that as your track. So you will now have that track. Once you've done it once, you're good to go for the weekend. You can also save that good. track, I believe, and reuse it. Yes. So when would we use, uh, so to lap and timing mode. So we use Beacon to set it. Do we have to go back in and reset it to GPS for our timing once we've done that? Or do we leave it on beacon, and now that it's set at beacon, it knows where start stop is? No, we're gonna going to use uh, majority of people are going to use GPS. That's kind of what everybody uses nowadays. Beacons are are those. Uh, oh, where there's GP a I got it. So GPS is our beacon button. Our yes. Beacon button, which yes. is really our output to set your start well, stop, right? Yeah, they both come in through that beacon button, right. but one will store the GPS value, Got and the beacon it. is actually is a physical, physical transponder on the on track, the, like exactly. if you're doing some kind of spec uh -huh. racing yep. that requires you to be have incremental yep. time so that the scrutineers can check yes. and make sure you're not cheating. Yes. Got it. So use yes. GPS, use the, use the input from our harness, put a button on it, hit your start, stop, finish, take a lap, you're going to have your track map 
continue to use GPS, that will do all of your lap timing. Yep. It will record your best, your fastest, every single lap, and you can do predictive. Yes. Cool. We'll get yep. into predictive later. Page select, if you want to assign a channel to change the page automatically for you, you mm -hmm. can do that. Brightness, we can set our normal mode or our night mode. Our night mode is triggered by the uh, night mode input, which is a 12 volt in to the dash on mm -hmm. that pin. And what that does is that triggers night mode for not only the screen brightness, but the shift light, shift light. Now, is that something we attach to like a headlight switch exactly. or something? Mm -hmm. Okay, so as soon as you turn on your lights, it dims down the dash yep. so it's not blinding yep, you at night. Exactly. Super easy. And night mode control, this is if you want to manually override without using the pin. Got it. You may do that. Okay. Um, monitored channels. So these are channels that uh, if you want to have... Uh, monitored by the dash but aren't being used in the dash setup. So something in, coming across in, over CAN that you're not using in your setup but you still want the dash to... So that would be for like a warning yeah, or an exactly, alarm. Exactly. You don't actually have the channel displayed uh -huh. on any of your screens. Yes. It can monitor it. Yes. It can spit out that alarm or yes. warning. But you don't have to chew up real estate on exactly. one of your layouts or yep. your screens to actually physically yes. monitor it full time. Correct. Really cool. Yep. And then one last thing I want to touch on real quick that's brand new for this release. Uh -huh. That's really cool. You may not even know about this, uh, but we have a timers uh, page. And what this does, so I click plus, we have performance timers where we can do a quarter mile, half mile, one mile. No way. Yeah. Dude. So we can do a quarter <laughs> mile, and it starts when we want, let's say, our speed input. So if our speed is greater than zero, it starts the timer. As soon as you hit one quarter mile, it stops the timer and you have that on your, oh your display. Well, the only caveat, you currently can't log it. Okay. It will remain on the screen until you push the reset button. Uh, which is the button on the right. Yes. Change pages on the left, reset timers, countdown timers, anything else, mm -hmm. uh, alarms from the right button. Yep. So, um, but it'll remain on the screen until you reset it or okay. power cycle the dash. The other... Uh, cool. So you can do actual quarter mile testing. Quarter mile, or you can do speed, zero to 60. Zero to 60 or, testing, right. Yep. So you set up all that, and it, it, what's nice about this is the quick setup pre-configures everything for you. All you have to do is drag that timer function into your layout, and you're done. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. That's really cool. That's really cool. And it cool. works really well. Yeah. So, I mean, now if you're out testing, if you're open course and you want to find out what that quarter mile time is, uh, they don't have the lights at the strip, you can actually make a pass. Or what happens if uh, you're making a pass yeah. and something goes wrong at the track and their timing system messes up. You've, You've got, got it on the you dash. You've got verifiable evidence of, uh -huh. of what you actually did yep. at the track. Yep. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, that's a good overview, I think, and a good start of Dash Design 2 and the 2.1 release of this. Um, I know this is going to be really, really helpful uh, for our Dash Design competition, guys. Uh, we will be making that announcement soon. If you're watching this in 2020, the Dash Design competition is over. Um, but uh, regardless, we're going to bring you more of these, and uh, we really want to know what your feedback is. What, uh, what didn't we cover? What did we cover that you thought was good? What would you like to see us expand on more? These videos are for you uh, to get the most out of your Dash and your Dash Design software. So um, please give us that feedback. Um, we're malleable. We will, we will roll with it and make sure that we're getting you the information you need so that you have the best experience possible. I'm Lawson. I'm here with... Jason. And uh, we'll be bringing you, <laughs> be bringing you some more content soon. Thanks for watching. Now the good news is, in the future, we're nowhere close to that yet. The good news is, <laughs> that we're gonna cut that scene and we'll come back to it in about eight months. <laughs> oh yeah. God! Yeah, let's. Well, he will personally add it for you by contacting me. By contacting the guys that add it. <laughs>